you are watching Cult Fuse Chin. Welcome to another Cold Fusion video, Android. It's come a long way since the notorious laggy mess that iOS users used to look down upon. And of course, that all changed with Ice Cream Sandwich, but today, Android takes another leap forward with Android 5.0. Of course, Android 5 was revealed at Google's I.O. yesterday, and here's what you need to know without the clutter. First up, the material design. Android is no longer flat, but now features a layered design different elements of the UI can now slide on top of one another or into each other. This can give some pretty interesting effects as well as some visual clues as to how the UI actually functions. In addition to this, every finger touch is now registered with bright pastel colours that are all the rage in the 2010s. The design language is telling you, I'm simple, I'm seamless, and I'm fun. Next up, animations. There's a whole bunch of ease in, ease out motion graphics happening here, and Google claims that it's all running at 60 frames per second. It's about time we kind of saw this animation on the Android UI. It's a small thing, but it's definitely a welcome addition. And all of this isn't just for smartphones. The new design changes will take hold for all of Google's platforms. The lock screen receives some updates. You'll be noticing that there's a card system now for your notifications, and they can be fully accessed with a double tap or swipe to dismiss. When the notifications are expanded, they also use the new layered design language. Going past the lock screen but continuing with the card theme, there's now a semi-unintrusive notification card system called Heads Up. The notification comes down from the top and hangs on top of whatever app you're doing, waiting for further instruction. Now previously, if you got a phone call, it would take up the whole screen, so this definitely also is a welcome addition. Google also announced Project Volta for Android, and basically it's just a more adjustable power management system. So you can adjust your radios, your GPS, your CPU, and your display. Google claims that you can get 90 minutes of extra time on the Nexus 5. Personal unlocking was also unveiled, and with Android 5, your device is now aware of where you are and how you use your device, and can bypass the lock screen if necessary. For example, if you're connected to your usual secured home Wi-Fi, the chances are there's not much need for your passcode. Your device now knows this and can automatically get you straight to the home screen. In Android 5, your device can also determine if you're holding the phone via tethering through Android Wear, or it can use your voice to determine if you're the user of the device. Chromebooks and Chrome OS have also become more useful. Chrome OS can now talk with Android and can give you Android notifications, SMS, or display apps directly from your phone. Mobile web searches have also changed. Now there's a card-like interface with dynamic animations with image searches at the top of the screen and more information underneath. This new search also ties into apps that you already have listed on your phone. Recent apps get an overhaul. They've now gotten prettier, but have actually taken an efficiency step backwards. I'll tell you why. Android 5's recent apps now behave like Google Chrome tabs, which is great and it looks great, but it's actually going to get a bit more cluttered now because your recent apps also now include the open tabs in Google Chrome as well. So I'm not sure why Google has done that, but I guess we'll see how it works out. Under the hood, Art Runtime is here to stay, and Google is claiming that we can see up to two times performance on some applications. Art is also embracing the 64-bit era of mobile, which is great to see. There was a bit of talk about Android moving beyond mobile to other areas such as the automotive industry, and of course, the wearables. So that's basically the main highlight points of Android 5. It's looking like a great OS, and Android is really starting to tighten up and look like a succinct, cohesive product, which is definitely what we want to see. So there's a couple of questions that you guys will be asking. When will I be able to see this on my device? There's no word on that yet. And this brings me to another point. One of the main issues that Android still has is updates for older phones. In my opinion, they really should have addressed that before moving forward. And as a side point, history tells us that the Note 4 will probably be running Android 5. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. And as usual, don't forget to give a thumbs up if you liked it, comment and subscribe. And while you're here, please check out some other videos on this channel. There's a whole heap of stuff that would either blow your mind, give you nostalgia shivers, or teach you something. Anyway, this has been Dagogo, and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.